Welcome to a Bible talk from Lower Mountains Anglican Church. Our first reading comes from Amos chapter 5, and you can find it on page 918 of uh, the Bibles at the back of the church. If you don't have one, uh, you can quickly run up the back because I'm going to just quickly before I read, uh, help us understand what's happening. Uh, so Amos was a prophet uh, to the, um, the nation of Israel um, quite a few centuries before the birth of Jesus. And, and he preached at a time when everything seemed to be going really well uh, for Israel, uh, but they uh, had failed to listen uh, to God and to do uh, right uh, to follow his law and to treat people in the way they ought to be treated with justice. Uh, and so he has words of uh, warning for them about judgment that is going to be coming. Uh, so I'm going to read uh, from Amos chapter 5, uh, starting at verse 18. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light? Pitch dark without a ray of brightness. I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs, for I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings 40 years in the wilderness, people of Israel? You have lifted up the shrine of your king, the pedestal of your idols, the star of your God, which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will send you into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is God Almighty. Our second Bible reading is found on page 1188 of the Bibles from the back. And Paul is writing to the Thessalonians to correct the misconception about the day of the Lord's return. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 11. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying peace and safety Destruction will come on them suddenly as labour pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should not surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness, so then let us not be like others who are asleep but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Father's Day can be a day of joy, yet for so many, it's a day of grief. It all depends on who your father is. 
Today we're looking at the words of the Apostles' Creed. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. As we consider these words, we know that the day Jesus returns will be a day of joy for some and a day of grief for others. And again, it all depends on who your Father is. As we come to such a sensitive topic, let's pray that we would find comfort in the true fatherhood of God. Father in heaven, may we take comfort in you as Father. May we rejoice with you when your children call you Father. May we grieve with you when they ignore you. As we consider our eternity with you today, give us ears to hear, hearts to change, and hope for the future. Amen. After enjoying the food and wine of a Christmas feast, the German mercenaries went to bed, convinced that there was no danger. But in the darkness, George Washington was crossing the Delaware River. Under the cover of night, his army was approaching. The German mercenaries woke to the sound of gunfire, staggered to their weapons and clothes, still half drunk. They saw their friends die in front of them before feeling the sharp pain of musket fire themselves. Soon, they were led away as prisoners. Can you imagine the fear, the confusion, the distress as they staggered up only to fall straight back down? The day Washington crossed the Delaware was a great victory that brought him much glory and turned the tide of the American Revolution. But for those who stood against him, It was a day of great darkness. God tells us through the prophet Amos that when Jesus returns to judge the living and the dead, it will be a day of darkness. That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light? pitch black, without a ray of brightness. And so Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come upon them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. While the German soldiers said peace and safety, Washington's army was crossing the Delaware. While the foreign mercenaries were drunk and asleep, Washington's army was surrounding them. They would not escape. Just as Washington's attack was a day of darkness and destruction, for those who do not follow Jesus, the day of the Lord will be a day of darkness. It is a day to be feared, to be dreaded, a day that should lead us to seek refuge. But something changes for those who trust in Jesus. The day he returns will not be a day of darkness. It will not come as a surprise attack. Instead, we are children of the light. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are children of the light and children of the day. What changed? What transformed darkness to light? The light entered the darkness. He ascended into heaven. We hear the words of the Apostles' Creed, He ascended into heaven, and it is good news. Jesus' ascension into heaven is good news, for He sends us His Spirit, so we are always known and loved. You know that feeling when you're iced out of a relationship? When you want to reach out, but you know things have changed? When you want to speak, but you know that you'll be misunderstood? We will never have that feeling with God. Jesus says, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Jesus, the light that entered the darkness, now leaves the world. 
but he doesn't leave it in darkness. He gives us his light so that the light of the world may enter the darkness of our hearts and shine for all to see. So Paul can write in 1 Thessalonians, you are children of the light. This is good news. The Spirit is our advocate. As Paul writes in Romans 8, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. The Spirit of Christ, who is the light of the world, now lives in us and speaks to God for us. He advocates for us. So there is never a moment where God doesn't hear our prayers or understand our every thought. When we don't understand our emotions, God does. When we don't have the right words, the Spirit speaks for us. When all we can do is groan, the Spirit groans with us and speaks on our behalf to God the Father. So we are never trapped alone in a cage of our own bodies or in a prison of our minds. We can never say that no one understands our deepest hurt, pain or desires. Jesus sets us free from the prison of isolation that so often entraps us and he sets us free to live in relationship with him, to be known and loved, to be seen and understood. Jesus' ascension into heaven is good news, for he sends us his spirit, so we are always known and loved. Jesus ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father is good news because our righteousness is in heaven. So we have confidence and security. When I started working as a school teacher, I would speak regularly with the principal. I would walk into his office with confidence. When I was talking with a colleague and they brought up an issue they had, I suggested they just speak to the principal as well. They let out an exacerbated sigh and said, no one else can do that. Only you walk into his office like it's a completely normal thing to do. He doesn't have time to sit down with 300 staff for a cup of tea every week. It was a good feeling to have the ear of the principal. But naively, I took it for granted. Foolishly, I pushed one or two or five, ten, too many times. And soon it became clear that I couldn't just walk into his office anymore. It was hard. It was isolating. I felt the hurt of the loss of voice and being shut out. Can you imagine feeling that way with God? Maybe you can, because maybe you do. Maybe you used to have a good prayer life, to have great habits of getting into God's Word, and now... Well, things have changed. Maybe you used to really enjoy your relationship with God, but now it seems stale. Maybe you used to be really involved at church and really appreciate the community, but now it's haphazard. You might think there's just too much water under the bridge, that God doesn't want to hear your struggles. You might think, I haven't been a good Christian this week, so... God probably doesn't want me to bother him. But dear friends, we are never shut out from God. We know that we can always approach God with confidence because Jesus has won the victory for us. Hebrews 10 verse 12 says, When Jesus had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Jesus has made us perfect forever because he is perfect forever. And this is important. We need to know this because this means our status before God, 
Our righteousness depends not on what we do, but on who Jesus is. He is our righteousness. And where is He? Seated at the right hand of the Father. Our righteousness is in heaven. This changes everything. For when we hear the deceiving voice say, God couldn't really love you, Jesus points to his wounds and says, God really does, and I am sitting here as proof. We rejoice in the words of Romans 8, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. When we hear the condemning voice say, you aren't welcome in God's presence, Jesus points to his wounds and says, yes, you are. When we hear the condemning voice say, God doesn't want you to bother him, Jesus says, yes, he does, and I will speak for you. When we hear the condemning voice say, you can't approach God, you can't go into the throne room, Jesus points to his wounds and says, yes, you can, I have won the victory, I am sitting at the right hand of the Father, and I am speaking for you. You are welcome, because I am welcome. And what is more, we aren't just welcome, but we are already there. As Ephesians 2 verse 6 reminds us, God raised us up with Christ Jesus and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We sit with Jesus now, and one day we will sit with Him on God's throne forever. As Revelation 3.21 says, Jesus promises, To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with the Father on his throne. This is good news. I approached the principal's office. I had a new idea that I wanted to discuss and put forward. I approached knowing that once I had been unable to enter. But now, now I had been invited. I had been told once more that his door was always open. My relationship with the principal had been restored. I was once again welcome, once again confident to bring him my concerns, to speak freely. I once again felt known, seen and heard. And friends, it is a far better feeling. But how much greater is the feeling of knowing that we can not only walk into the principal's office, but into the very throne room of God, knowing that we will always be welcome. For Christ sits at the right hand of the Father, and we sit there with Him. When we look at the world and despair, Let us look to the throne room of God. When we look at our bodies and ask, is this me? Let us look to the throne room of God. When our minds tell us we aren't lovable, when our insecurities crush us, may we look to the throne room of God and see the confidence and security that He offers. When we're tempted to believe the lies of this world, may we live fixated on the throne room of God, the place of our righteousness and of Christ's glory. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father is good news, for our righteousness is in heaven, so we have confidence and security. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Jesus returning to judge is good news. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation. So we await his return with joy. But it's also hard news. And it's bad news for some. For those who don't follow Jesus, the day he returns will be a day of darkness. Like the German mercenaries, they will be cut down, drunk and asleep in chaos and confusion. We must grieve our sin, turn away from darkness and turn to Jesus, accepting his offer of forgiveness. We must grieve our rejection of God so that when Jesus returns, we will never grieve again. So that the day of darkness becomes a day of light. For he alone turns darkness into light. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. We will not be caught off guard by an army that comes to destroy us. We will welcome and celebrate as an army arrives, not bringing destruction, but victory. When we see the army approaching, when we see Jesus returning, we will rejoice. It is the day we have been waiting for. It is a day of liberation, a day of light. Do you see the beauty? Do you see the goodness of these words of the Apostles' Creed? In his ascension, Jesus sends us his spirit to intercede for us. As he sits at the right hand of the Father, Jesus intercedes for us, And now, as Jesus comes to judge the living and the dead, he will intercede for us once more. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. As is written in Isaiah 53, For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressor. We have triple intercession. And this is good news. This is comfort. For we will never be separated from the love of God. Christ will return, not to say, where is your righteousness? But to say, here is your righteousness. Here is your salvation. Here is your victory. So any theology, any idea, any so-called Christian teaching that turns the return of Christ into anything other than a glorious event for his people, must be wrong. Any so-called Christian teaching that causes distress or anxiety or fear about the return of Christ, must be wrong. For when Jesus returns, everything will be made right. We will become truly righteous in every sense of the word. We will have resurrection bodies that never spoil, perish, or fade. And the answer to every question will be, as much as is necessary for our complete happiness. Will our pets be in heaven? As much as is necessary for our complete happiness. Will we work in heaven? As much as is necessary for our complete happiness? Will we have memories in heaven as much as is necessary for our complete happiness? And why will we be completely happy? Because we will be with God. We will enjoy His glory and bask in His goodness. Now we share in the life of God through the intercession of His Son and Spirit. But soon we will share in the life of God perfectly and forever as much as is necessary for our complete happiness. Jesus returning to judge is good news. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation. So we await 
his return with joy. As we finish, let us be reminded of the comfort, the great comfort that we have in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Jesus ascended into heaven and he intercedes for us. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and intercedes for us. He will come to judge the living and the dead, and as he does, he intercedes for us. So take heart, be confident, for we are never separated from the love of God. Jesus' ascension into heaven is good news, for he sends us his spirit, so we are always known and loved. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father is good news, for our righteousness is in heaven, so we have confidence and security. Jesus returning to judge is good news, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation, so we await his return with joy. For now we sit with Christ in the spiritual realms, but soon we will sit with Christ on the throne physically and forever. For now the light of Christ shines in our hearts, but one day the world will shine even brighter. Yes, as we read of our future in Revelation 22, the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. You have been listening to a Bible talk from Lower Mountains Anglican Church. If you'd like to know more about Jesus, get further information or download other resources, please visit our website at lmap.org.au.